Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Christy. I'm a homeschool mom to three kids, and today I'm gonna to be talking all about Math Mammoth. So if you caught my last homeschool update video, you would have seen that we have changed math curriculums, and we were trying out a few different ones to see what would be the best fit for my oldest daughter for next year. We've been using Math Mammoth for about a month now, and so I wanted to kind of share our thoughts so far using the program. The Math Mammoth is a mastery approach math curriculum. You can purchase the PDF version of the books right from Math Mammoth's website. Each grade has two separate books, book A and book B. We jumped right in with 4B. That is where my daughter kind of placed. With it being a mastery approach curriculum, it covers certain topics each grade level, and it will kind of do it in sections or units or chapters. And so it will start with the first chapter, which might be all about division, and it will cover a bunch of different things about division and kind of build upon incrementally by lesson by lesson until they have a really good understanding in a lot of aspects of the topic. I mentioned in my update video that I think a mastery approach curriculum is a key to helping my daughter with math. She does not like math. She does not enjoy doing math. And every math curriculum that we've tried in the past has been a spiral approach to learning. And while I really like the way spiral approach sounds on paper with the constant revisiting, I also can recognize that not every child learns that way and it's not best for every single child. For my daughter, she would be introduced to a topic and then it, depending on the curriculum, it would cover that for a couple of days and then we'll switch to something completely new for a couple of days and something new for a couple of days and something new and then come back to that first topic. And the pattern varies depending on the curriculum, but I was finding that what my daughter, what was happening with her is she was forgetting what they had covered with that first introductory lesson by the time they came back around. And so it was like we were kind of taking a step back because we had to like reteach and relearn that part of it to move on then to the second part of it. And she just, it wasn't, she wasn't retaining what she needed to retain to learn the new concepts. I appreciate the approach and mastery style of Math Mammoth and so far it's working really well for my daughter. With the consistency and the repetitive doing problems, a lot of practice that it provides, it's been really good for her. Something I wanted to kind of mention as well, you can buy the hard copies of the books as well from the website. I chose the PDF because it was just more reasonably priced and I didn't mind printing it myself. And you get the tests, you get the answer key, you get the user guide, you get some cutouts and everything all sent to you in a couple different files. If you purchase it, please, please, please read the user guide that she sends you. Oftentimes I think people who use this curriculum skip that part because it's kind of most of the teaching instruction and all of the things you typically need to teach the lesson is actually in the student book. So I think people skip that user guide and don't read it thoroughly. However, I think that there's some key information on how to use this program in that user guide. Maria, the creator of the curriculum, kind of breaks down how the lessons are going. So there are lesson numbers, however, they're not meant to do an entire lesson in one day. There may be times where it's a shorter lesson and you're able to get through a full lesson in one day, but it's not designed to be used that way. A lesson is supposed to take two to three days to complete. She guides you through dividing the pages up by the number of school days that you choose to do for that year. And that is like the number of pages that your child is supposed to do every day. So they just do that number of pages every day, whether it gets to the next lesson or not. The next day you just pick up where you left off. I think that that's important because some of those lessons are really long. And so I think that if people were under the impression that they were supposed to do one full lesson every day, it would be really overwhelming to a lot of people and a lot of kids. Typically it averages about two pages a day and that's typically what we've been doing as well. Also, she mentions in this user guide not to assign every problem to your child. The child is not meant to do every single problem. She said a good average 
average student would be fine with half of the problems on those two pages. I think this is another really important thing that people need to know about this curriculum because there are a lot of problems and she does that so that people have ample practice and the kids that need more practice have it there. And so she, rather than try to supplement with more problems somewhere else, she just gives them to you and you are going to take the problems away if they're not needed. I think that this makes so much sense and it also really helps keep the lessons way less overwhelming to both me and my daughter. So typically what I do is I look through the lesson and I highlight the problems I want her to complete. It usually averages about half of the problems on those two pages and she's been really good with that. She's She likes that she's not pressured and when she sees all those problems, she's not pressured thinking, I have to do all of these problems. There are also reviews built into the lessons. There's a end of the chapter like mixed review where it covers a couple different topics and there's like a review on that specific topic as well. These reviews you can do like over a couple of days if you would like. There's also a separate test booklet that gives you a test for each chapter as well. Something that she does often mention as well is that you can make this more of a spiral curriculum if you want to. So the problems that your child skips the first time around, you can go back and do the problems later on and make it kind of a spiral mastery hybrid. And I think that that's a really cool option as well for those people that want that constant review of previous cover topics. Another thing that I really appreciate about this curriculum is that at the beginning of each unit, she gives a giant, like a huge list of links and these links link to games that they can play to practice different parts of what they're learning um, and it's amazing because sometimes you just need a different approach to practice a different hands-on different way of coming at something for the child to really nail it down so i appreciate that i don't have to go look for all of these different resources for practice she includes them all in the beginning of the chapter another thing that i appreciate about this curriculum is that she also has a youtube channel for Full of videos for this curriculum and you can access it from her YouTube channel if you want you can sift through the ones that you need or you can go to her website and there's an area in there where you can click on the videos and it has it broken down by grade level and by chapter and you can click on exactly the one for that lesson and it's a video of her teaching it at a whiteboard I think that that's so helpful because a video aspect I feel like is a very beneficial thing to a math program because for me, I'm not the strongest math person and so me trying to teach these higher concepts is difficult sometimes. So you can go to these videos and it just explains it in a different way and she just breaks it down in a visual way for your child. And they're not like entertaining or anything, it's literally just Maria at the whiteboard, which I like as well because my daughter's very much, I want my math straight to the point. I don't want a bunch of fluff. She doesn't want like stories and like all of these different like fluffy things in her math curriculum, she just wants to do the math. And so I appreciate the videos not being fluff. The curriculum itself, the pages are pretty blank. There is a little bit of color spread throughout. Um, some of the lessons have a little bit of pictures occasionally, but rarely. It's mostly just kind of the equations all written out. They tend to be kind of like a blue color, not really black and white. The other thing that I really love about the look of the lessons is that she often includes graph paper right in the textbook, which I love. My daughter also really loves this because she can write it so much neater. She writes her numbers so much neater and then she can follow the equation so much more precisely because they're all lined up for her. The lessons themselves are in the student book. They're in blue boxes and you would just read that with your child. As your child gets more comfortable and um, older, they can definitely read it themselves. It's actually written to the child. So I really like that as well because I'm hoping that eventually she'll become more independent and won't need me to sit there and read it with her. Right now, I don't mind doing that at all, but that's a really good goal and I like that it's written that way for her.
A lesson varies in length. I can't really say how long it takes Lacey to do because it depends on the concept, it depends on the lessons, it depends on how many problems I've highlighted. So I really just try to make sure that I highlight enough problems that she's getting adequate practice with the concept without going overboard. I hope you guys enjoyed getting a look at Math Mammoth. I'm pretty sure this is what we're gonna be using next year and I'm really happy with our choice. This has built so much confidence in my child. She She's been doing division problems for the fun of it on her own on the whiteboard just because and so I really like it. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye.